Welcome back to the program. It's still Daybreak Africa, and of course, it's our Friday episode. And this is a very special Friday episode because we've been joined by an actor and an entertainer and anything that has to do with entertainment, basically. We have with us to talk about some of the trending stories that has um, taken up the media space. Although we're not just going to talk about uh, some of these stories, we're also going to meet him as a celebrity and know him and know uh, things about his job and um, everything that revolves around him, just to meet him in person. He'll be joining us via Skype and we have with us this beautiful Friday morning, Awe Ayobami. Good morning, Ayobami. Good morning. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for, for joining, joining us. us today. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for correcting the pronunciation of your name before we started <laughs> <Of> <laughs> the <course>. program <laughs> because I definitely would have said Awe. Uh, okay, let, I think I want to pick the conversation from your name. How do you feel when people pronounce it the wrong way? despite the fact that a lot of people are likely to pronounce the popular A-W-E in Yoruba, which is Awe. I mean, I've gotten used to it. I, initially, when people call me Awe, I get pissed because, mm. you know the term Awe, this is so, Awe so. Right. So, uh, yeah, I feel like they're making jest of me and stuff. But initially, mm. as I grew, and I started acting, I understood that I can't correct everybody. Mm. You understand? Mm. The fan base, I can only correct the few people I can correct. And later people will get used to the away, right? So right. I just let it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, that's, that's a good thing. I think almost everybody has had that experience where you have people not, uh, some would even argue with you and try to correct, correct you, you on something that you own. But that's okay. Now let's talk about uh, your job and your career. Uh, and I think I will start with the acting. I know your profile says you are also a boxer and an award-winning model. Now, first of all, um, as an actor, a boxer and an award-winning model, how do you manage to combine these? Because I've seen, especially with actors, I've seen uh, a number of people have, um, what's it called, other jobs, other nine to five jobs, or other engaging jobs that takes their time, that requires their physical presence. And in many cases, a lot of them tend to drop one for the other eventually. I've seen TV presenters take up acting roles and in the end, maybe after like a year, the stress would be too much on them. They would have to either drop uh, the TV job or drop the acting job. How do you manage to combine these uh, three um, these three aspects That's of cool. your life? How do you mix them together? I mean, it's all entertainment. Modeling and acting is intertwined in a way. You know, I do commercial modeling. I do fashion runway and editorial, and I'm an actor. So it's easy. I it's, it's almost like I'm doing the same job because I what I'm doing is I, I'm selling a product to you. I'm either advertising myself as an actor or advertising the clothes or a product mm. or I'm telling you a story. So it's basically still the same thing. The only thing that is different is boxing. However, mm -hmm. it's still connected because I do fight choreographies and stuff so that helps me as an actor because it's easier for me to do my stunts myself and stuff like that so it's it's easy to connect together mm. okay um so how are you able to start off did you start from boxing first before you know moving into modeling and then um acting or you started from acting and then branched out into other um other aspects so how did you start and how did you realize you have an interest in boxing like you said boxing acting and modeling are very three different um niches so how were you able to you could, how were you able to bring your interests together and decide that okay i'm going to focus on all of these three without each of them clashing with um one another all right <laughs> let me start from the very beginning <laughs> uh when i was in school, yeah when i was in primary school I used to, I was part of the drama, uh, whatever. So my grandparents, I grew up with my grandparents. They don't pay my um, end of the year party money because mm -hmm. 
I'm part of the actors, so automatically I have to come. So I did acting, drama, and all of those. I was so good. Then later on, obviously now, secondary school and all of that, I forgot about that. I was doing boxing. Then eventually, I started modeling. You know, I already had that structure from when I was small. I looked like a model, I looked like that. Public um, people tell me, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And I like to try new things. So while I was boxing, I had I already had the structure. So I started modeling. As I was modeling and stuff, I came across Radio City Media a production house. So I started working with them as a film person, crew, and everyone was like, you. You look like an actor why don't you act mm. right because we make films and so i'm like that's true i started when i was small so i started out with short films voice recording because i do i do voiceovers too voice wow. recording for animation stuff like that and then i started featuring in films and acting became the number one job on my cv so because of my other talent, I was able to um, connect everything with acting. You know, acting is a way of life. Right. Right now. Yeah, right now I'm acting. And it's an interview. I can as well do this in a film. So every everything, every skill that I knew, I was able to bring it into acting. And it helped me as an actor. It made me versatile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, which of the three would you say is the most time consuming? Which one takes your time the most? Because I know that uh, as a boxer, you need time to train. You need time uh, for maybe when you appeared in a match or something. And then for modeling, uh, you also need time to appear for maybe a photo shoot or, or a session as a case may be. And then there's acting also. Sometimes you might be at the location for a week, two weeks and the rest. So for you as a person, which one do you think takes your time the most and how are you able to manage that time let's say you're at a location and someone or okay let's say you have a, a boxing bout maybe scheduled for maybe friday between some you and uh another boxer and then a movie comes up and you're called okay Ayobami, come to oshobo and the boxing <laughs> bout is in lagos how do you manage your time between how do you juggle between these three um jobs uh, first off, I don't box professionally anymore okay. because obviously it's going to clash. Okay. Yeah. So, however, it's still the the consumption of time is still kind of like the same for the three uh, jobs because uh, I I box to stay fit. So when I'm not on a film set, I'm probably working out or doing something that has to do with fitness mm. and that's not that's not professional that's not i'm not it's not if i'm going to do it for a branch i'm just doing it for myself to stay fit and for the love of um the sports um however i think acting takes my time the most because mm. i'm always on one set or the other or auditioning for one job or the other or getting ready to go for one set or the other so I'm going to say acting and modeling together takes my time the most because I classify them as, as both. I, I get myself prepared the same way for both modeling and acting. So it's kind of like the same thing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, you, you are um, one person who has you know, so many talent and I will call you a multi-talented um, person. So you, you've been an actor, a boxer, and then of course a model as well. That means that you are always everywhere at different points in time. This brings me back to you know the topic of our discussion, which is um, the use of policemen as um, as a tool for intimidation. You you've been on set so many times. You've been with people, you know, celebrities that oh, would always bring in one security detail or the other from somewhere, from you know everywhere, just basically following them all around. And many times we've seen it, you know at least the past few weeks we've seen so many cases of where, where, whereby celebrities will come out to to um to harass um a, a person because they possess something about them you know on social media and all of that so i want to know your opinion i want to ask i want to i want to i want to know what you think about this do you think it is right so let's start from the point of you know first do you think it's actually very much okay for um celebrities to get 
security details now i'm mm -hmm. not saying that they have to protect themselves right they have to because they're sort of they're popular they have to keep themselves from harm that's that's okay but then do you think that it is right to actually get um people in the police for that policemen you know they the, maybe they rent, for the lack of better word, in quotes. Maybe they, they, okay, they pay money for them to be part of their security. Deal. So is that right? Let's start from there. Hmm. This question is it's quite tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But I think, I think it's necessary security guards to, to uh, protect you as a celebrity, whether they are policemen or they are uh, a man or whatever it is, I think it's necessary. Because hmm, even me, that I'm not blown, blown, just because I've been in a few films, I get harassed um, when I go to certain places. So imagine, a-listers in the industry. Most of the time, I get to ask them that, how do you manage people, your fans, people that hate you, people that, um, yeah, people that don't want to see you. Some celebrities even get stoned just because they, they play the character that is not so good in a film. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, celebrities need that to protect themselves. Yeah. Okay, um, I was going to say that um, in addition to what Grace has just said, um, there's been quite a number of stories in the past few weeks in regards to how um, celebrities use the policemen assigned to them, not just the ones assigned to them, if, let's just say the policemen generally, uh, which in some cases or to some people might be a bit of um, using policemen as a tool for intimidation against uh, people who are beneath uh, them or people who are not up to their standards, so to speak. Um, now, how would you um, evaluate this as a person? Because I feel like that's where, um, that's where Grace's question is coming from. Uh, for someone who is growing really fast in the industry, how would you evaluate uh, celebrities using policemen as a tool to intimidate uh, people? Because we've seen a lot of cases, just um, uh, some less than 48 hours ago, a lady has been um, sentenced to two years imprisonment mm -hmm. for defamation of character. And we've seen now, not because, not that what she did was right, not that she doesn't deserve whatever the judgment, um, the constitution uh, stipulates, but um, we've seen people do worse things and get away with it, even amongst these celebrities and um, even amongst uh, our politicians and top, uh, top uh, officials. But then you find that um, when there's something someone else did, uh, we, there's still the case of the guy who, have, who uh, insulted the former first lady. There, there, there are a number of them like that where you have uh, big people uh, use the name and the power they have. Now, I understand, like you've said, that um, there is, it's important for them to have that power and have that name because people tend to want to take advantage of them. But then, where do we draw the line as a people and as celebrities? Um, first off, let's remember that celebrities are humans, right? right? they're not perfect so um yeah we first of all need to understand that second i do not think it's right i think it's very bad and i know it happens if not we're not talking about this now uh, it's i don't know you know just like i said celebrities are humans just like we have good people we have bad people it's the same yeah. for actors, celebrities, politicians, and uh, everybody, right? So we have the good people, we have the bad people. So imagine if you give power to someone who is selfish, who is wicked, who doesn't care about anybody but themselves. They will misuse it. 
So uh, it doesn't just apply to celebrities. It applies to anyone and everyone. Imagine if I'm a bad person now and I have, have power, I have money. Not that anybody knows me, but because I have money, I'm wealthy and all of that, I want to get security guards for myself. I can do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I can decide to harass someone on the road because they stand in front of my car or they, they lean on my car and stuff. And I'm not even a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think it applies to just celebrities. I think it applies to everybody. And I think it's an harassment. And I think it should be dealt with. I think an punishment for anyone who um, uses, who use their power to harass anyone. Mm. So I won't, I won't, um, I won't just say it's a celebrity thing. I think it's a bad thing. It's a wicked thing in the main thing. So uh, and it should be looked into. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, our time is very much far spent. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution on the program. But before we go, I see you've worked on um, My Siblings and I, you've worked on Brotherhood, you've worked on Tinsel, you've worked on Itura, you've worked on DJ and a lot of them. Um, what are, what are, which is your favorite one? And then what uh, are you looking forward to? What next, what next for Awe, Awe Ayobami? Beg your pardon. <laughs> Tight spot. All right. Uh, favorites. I don't, I don't think any one of them are my favorites because all of those films are like really nice. The directors and producers of each of those films you mentioned are producers I've been looking out to work with and I've worked with them. So I enjoyed my experience on all of those films. And some of them are films, some of them are series, so they are different experiences. So I can't, I can't choose a favorite for now. Uh, what am I looking forward to, right? Yes, I, yes. What I featured in a couple of to? films. Yeah, I, I featured in a couple of films that are coming out. I don't know if I can talk about them. Okay. I, I think she just. Yeah, some really good film. I featured in a boxing film this year. It's mm. Toby Bakery and likes. So look out for that. And um, I don't know. There are a couple of stuff I can't talk about. Just um, let's just. Uh, we understand. Cross our <laughs> If you understand, yeah. thank you so much for yeah. coming on the show. We thank really, really so do much. appreciate mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. All right, you asked us how far we can go on the interview segment of Daybreak Africa or the entire show. I do believe and hope you've enjoyed every bit of the conversation from our own studios up until this moment. From all of us at Daybreak Africa, from myself, Richard Abioye, and from Grace Kofi and our guest, Awe Ayabami, we're saying have a wonderful weekend and bye for now. <laughs>